Welcome to today's lecture entitled flow force compensation and spool design. This is uh, continuation of uh, the lectures on electro hydraulic valves. Um, I have put uh, this into a special topics, uh, a miscellaneous topics because uh, this is uh, some detailed idea about how to design a spool and how to compensate the flow force. <coughs> now, it is already established that steady state flow force has substantial contribution towards the stroking force. If we look into this figure, which you have seen in earlier lecture, that uh, how the flow force is working on uh, the spool. Uh, if we look into the spool, then uh, say let us consider the flow is coming like this and it is going out like this. This is full rectangular port, this means that there is a groove. Uh, here and so um, if we consider the length of this orifice will be pi into this diameter and uh, width is the opening which is x v. Now, for this configuration we know this flow will neither touch this wall nor uh, touch this land uh, with uh, a some uh, sufficient velocity or in other words at very low speed and some valve configuration it may touch uh, this um, land or this wall otherwise it will uh, make an angle uh, to this path which is theta and uh, it is uh, possible to predict this angle uh, theoretically. Now, what is happening <coughs> if we consider this pool on that spool there is a force on this wall this is the pressure force similarly the same pressure force is in the opposite direction in opposite face of another land then uh, we should consider then uh, this two will be balanced but if we consider this jet then definitely there is a force there is a force because this oil is moving in this direction so if we follow the newton's laws then there will be force and that force if we resolve this will have one in the lateral direction and uh, another in the axial directions of this pool now this force is called flow force this flow force uh, I mean at the steady state conditions if we look into this flow force direction of this force acting on the spool is in this direction that means it is trying to close this path. Okay. Now, while we are estimating what is the force required to move this spool then this flow force having a contribution substantial com contribution to us this total force apart from the other this uh, force when this pool is accelerating we have to consider the mass of that and if there is pressure imbalance anywhere we have to consider that force also. So, total force is calculated in that way, but uh, this force may be 30 percent 50 percent of the total force. So, if we can reduce this force definitely then control of this pool because we have to drive this pool with some force with some actuator that actuator if it is a hydraulic act actuator then there is less problem but if it is um, solenoid drive that means electrical drive in that case to generate that force and control of that is difficult so better to reduce this force if we cannot eliminate now <coughs> this force 
this f 1 the which is uh, the steady state uh, flow force can be estimated like this which we have uh, shown earlier. Now, C d is the coefficient of discharge, C v is the velocity coefficient, A 0 is the orifice area, P 1 and P 2 is the pressure difference and cos theta is the jet angle that derivation is shown earlier. Now, uh, this is important I have already discussed this force will try to close the port. Now, let us consider a large valve. Okay. Again it is 4 way, 4 way valve of spool diameter 25 millimeter. Once we say that spool diameter this means this larger diameter other is called stem. So, spool diameter means this is 25 millimeter stroke of 0.5 millimeter that is the x v is 0.5 millimeter at pressure 7 mega Pascals. Then the force uh, the stroking force may be estimated as large as 80 Newton. This considering um, the acceleration of this pool also. If this this pool has constant velocity then there is no force but when this is accelerating or decelerating there will be additional force. So, uh, summing up all such force it is 80 Newton. So, with hydro mechanical devices for stroking handling such a force is not a problem. However, for electromechanical devices it is nearly the upper limit of available generated force. Now, upper limit this term although we have used we can go for bigger solenoid, but looking into the size of this pool normally uh, the size of the drive solenoid should not be very big than the valve. So, in that case whatever the sol solenoid size we can provide with this dimensions we can see that this is almost the 80 Newton is almost the upper limit of the available generated force. In designing direct drive valves because this valve may be this, this is the main spool may be direct drive which are gaining popular for more reliability in some areas like an aircraft applicable um, it becomes crucial. This means that sometimes uh, why sometimes in many operations instead of pilot operated valve the direct drive valve is preferred the response is better. Now, pilot operated valve I, as I have men men mentioned that is called two stage. So, that is like it is like that. Uh, when there will be some signal to move that the spool will move the pilot stage. Now, through this pilot stage this may look identical like a spool valve, but small spool then there will be a small force which will be uh, um, diverted to this either this end or, or in the opposite end which will generate this force may be say 18 a Newton or that level to move that spool. So, that can be done, but response of such valve is much less. So, in many cases direct drive valve is required. Then for direct drive valve a, we cannot use this or even if, if you use that hydraulic again some controllability problem will be there. So, in that case if we would like to use the solenoid better to reduce this force this is the only area which we can reduce that I have mentioned therefore, reaction of flow force is desired both for direct drive single stage and also if in case of pilot operated it is better if you can reduce this force. Now, proposed methods of steady state flow force compensation by modifying this pool design are generally employed. Okay. So, one is that we can move this design of such pool as well as may be the sleeve because this is not uh, the direct body of the valve usually this will be a sleeve. So, we can modify designed to reduce such force. 
it increases the manufacturing cost definitely if we want to if this is very simple thus just a step down instead of that if you would like to modify this profile naturally the manufacturing cost will be more and even increase nonlinearity in controlling the force sometimes due to this card or maybe some profile which I will show um, nonlinearity will increase but still reduction of this force is required. Now, um, so there are we, one can think of many methods, but all may not be acceptable due to the nonlinearity in control or too, ex, too much increase in the cost of manufacturing, but there are some popular design which are accepted for uh, flow force compensation. Now, one is that jet angle modification. Say for example, if we can make this angle 90 degree that means, straight directly it is going in the upward direction say, then definitely there will be no component in this directions. And one, one can see this you may ask that, uh, but F 2 will be there F 2 will be large, but F 2 is uniformly distributed over the circumference. If not uniformly distributed, it might be discrete, but uh, at, at a certain angle equal amount of force. So, that will cancel each other. So, we can make this theta 90 degree to make this flow force 0, but it is not possible by providing this group design. One way of making the jet angle 90 degree not even not exactly 90 degree, but close to that is that instead of making the rectangular groove for port in the valve sleeve say this is the rectangular port very common for that rectangular port because this machining may not be that difficult. So, flow can go like this. So, this is the 90 degree. Uh, sorry, this this is this is the jet angle. So, for full rectangular float, we cannot reduce this theta to 90 degree. Or reduce or maybe we would say that to make it 90 degree, it is not possible. Then what we can do, we can provide the rectangular hole at different positions. Maybe four at a 90 degree, maybe 6 at 60 degree or more, but making such rectangular hole on this sleeve is difficult. Say um, one is that electro hydraulic uh, sorry um, uh, that is non conventional machining electro discharge machining or something can be provided, but uh, for mass scale obviously, it can be done with the use of broaching. How it is done? That first we make an hole, circular hole by drilling. Say if it is a 90 degree, just two cross hole we can provide there and then using a broaching tool, we can make this square hole. Uh, so, but uh, it is seen that if we make such square <coughs> hole, then uh, this um, flow jet angle may be 90 degree, very close to that. Okay. So, and uh, if we can make it is 90 degree because cos theta, uh, theta will be 0 in that case and there will be no component in the F, F, uh, in this uh, uh, axial directions. Okay. It is to be noted that the rectangular holes are better, but the circular holes in compensation of linearity also serve the purpose. This means that as I told we make a circular hole then we broach it, instead of that we can have a circular hole there also that will serve the purpose that means that will compensate the force 
however um, this we, there will be more nonlinearity due to that now <coughs> a larger spool and diameter is also another solutions what it is we can make this uh, land diameter is uh, more also the stem diameter as you see here is um, more than what is at the middle. Now, in that case what happens that due to we have to make this group depth and here also depth in such a way we can see this angle is uh, more than is normal angle it is close to 90 degree and uh, the flow force is reduced not fully compensated, but it is reduced, but this is to increase the flow rate and thus the pressure drop in the opposite side of the flow force to have more force opposing the flow force. This means that usually larger diameter means there is a op orifice opening because this length is more. So, for a same stroke the uh, orifice size will be more there will be more flow and on the pressure drop uh, will be more in that case uh, the pressure is compensated. Okay. It reduces the flow force to some extent. However, this is effective only for large flow valve valves that means, if we use such well say for example, as I told the 25 millimeter di diameter that may be uh, around 25 liter per minute flow rate very high flow rate for that valve ok it is ok 25 millimeter is a large dimension if we think of this uh, valve design spool design and therefore, Mm, it is possible uh, to compensate to some extent this force. Moreover, such compensation named as pressure drop compensation, it is we call it large spool and uh, diameter from the end diameters. Uh, this is from the spool configuration, but actual the mechanism is that pressure drop compensation is not effective for partial orifice port valve. So, that means, if we use that rectangular ports uh, a few rectangular ports instead of full port it will not work. Another method is that recirculation land for compensation. Now, in that case let us look in, in this valve what is happening this pool end lands are made of specific profile this profile is made like this. Okay. Now, also the sleeve groove is made like this, but still if you look into this the port is uh, the orifice is rectangular full rectangular because orifice area is calculated this stroke length into pi into this diameter. So, this is rectangular, but instead of rectangular groove this is somewhat spherical groove inside. Now, for that what we see that whatever flow is coming due to this profile it is recirculating this once it start recirculating then this uh, although here is the jet angle, but due to this flow there is another force. So, that force um, um, counteract to each other and in that case the total uh, flow forces reduces, but if you look into this what uh, this 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 is a obviously special design not as simple as this for that what will be had or uh, what we will have such lands recirculate the flows before their way to final return path from the valve that I have discussed as a result an opposing force to the flow for flow is generated.
now but um, this design again um, usually made for very large flow because for small spool giving such profile is difficult um, also nonlinearity arises and apart from the cost giving a special profile now another possibility is that we can generate some negative force by designing the port accordingly now for that what we find negative force port is designed providing specific spool end profiles I, and land length dimensions and the groups in the sleeve if we look into this in comparison to the earlier one there it was a spherical instead of that it is stiff and uh, an inclined surface due to that as you look into this instead of uh, uh, flow moving in this directions here it is of course moving in this directions on the other hand it is moving in the from here to here it is moving in this directions and there is a recirculating <coughs> due to that the force is negative it becomes it can be calculated design can be made such that flow force is negative that means this will try to open the valve and ultimately to move a spool in this direction total force will be less now it gives better compensation in the expense of manufacturing cost if we can use this type of port then it is better but many manufacturing cost is high now these are the few methods which i have shown for specific amount of compensation care must be taken in design say if we uh, so this means that we can optimize something it is not always um, expected that the flow force will be zero we can have some flow force and designing the drive that means designing the solenoid um, or any other drive and keeping the compensation force to a limit we can have some optimum design now <coughs> uh, using such uh, methods what type of compensation may be available this is described here say for example that this is uncompensated that means if we take this type of valve directly then what we find that this flow force will increase with uh, this valve stroke length okay this is almost linear for this type of port now if it is compensated a good compensated valve is something like this now this say for example negative port sometime it, it may become overcompensated now overcompensated is having a difficulties because this due to this flow force in that case the it is trying to open what we are giving the we are giving the force in the direction of the stroke but if flow force overcompensated mean flow force is trying to open the valve that means if we keep the valve without any force due to the flow force if there is leakage that will try to move mm. so mm, controlling of overcompensated valve is difficult nonlinearity and the stability are two major criteria now nonlinearity we understand say for example this type of when it will come that we what we will find the force not always a constant it is varying again not linearly varying then controlling of such force will be difficult i mean it is non-linear control we have to introduce and stability is another point stability means that when we are moving the spool it has dynamics then we have to stop the spool at a particular position because we 
one a definite movement of this pole, but what happens at that condition starting at the starting point particularly and the stopping point it will try to vibrate. Uh, so, we have to consider about that part also it might be sometimes that flow force is better from the control point of view of the stability. Okay. Now, apart from this uh, uh, the linear force, there is also a lateral force on spool valve. Now, as I have described, if I consider this force, jet force, then this is having two components F 1 and F 2. F 1 is the flow force which we cannot balance, we have to control, we have to add we have to control this force by the drive, but there is also the lateral force F 2, but for the full rectangular port or for the uniformly distributed uh, small rectangular ports or may not be rectangular also uniformly distributed. If we look into this F 2 ideally they are equal and opposite, so they are cancelling each other. So, there is no chance that there will be lateral force, but there may be lateral force due to several reason. One is that say for example, instead of this full rectangular port, we have used uh, say small holes, discrete rectangular holes, they are uniformly distributed, let us consider at 90 degree. But again due to the manufacturing error, they are might have, they are not exactly opposite to each other. Two are opposite, but they are say for example, center through these holes, through holes is not coinciding with the center of the slips. So, in that case there will be an imbalance, this is from that point of view. Again, if we consider this cylinder, this cylindrical surface, that cylindrical sur surface may have several defects. One is that they are not perfect, the surface is not parallel to the axis, some taper is there or the center of this and center of this pool is shifted, sleeve center of the sleeve and center of the spool is shifted. Hmm. So, in that case what will happen there will be imbalance in this force this F 2 will not be properly balanced in that case the spool will try to move towards one side and it will touch the sleeve and touching the sleeve means we need more force to control. So, lateral force we must consider while we are designing the such lateral force. However, this is uh, we cannot estimate such lateral force because these are due to the manufacturing defect and estimating such manufacturing defects and calculation of lateral force is very difficult only experimentally we can find out and we can provide some methods so that this force is also reduced. Now, lateral components of the steady state flow forces may not be evenly distributed round the periphery of the port openings uh, are not evenly distributed. This is due to the re this reason which I have already explained. Secondly, the leakage past this pool land causes lateral force. Say, <coughs> Suppose this is slightly moved in this direction, then leakage flow started and that flow is having some lateral force that will further push this pool in one direction. Thirdly and most crucial one is that due to taper land and or sleeve bore, bore may be also tapered, non parallel cylindrical surface with central axis etcetera and this, these are due to the machining error a lateral force is 
generated. Now, how it is generated, we will see in the next slide. Now, this uh, this is the ideal one which I have shown. Now, let us consider this land is like this instead of the cylindrical perfect cylinder is taper. Of course, this is an enlarged view, it will never be like this, uh, but there may have slight taper, even that will cause uh, substantial lateral force. Now, such lateral forces are normally not balanced and push the spool to slip, this is obvious. Now, due to tapered duct, what we will have? Say this first of all, this pool axis is not matching with the bore axis, there might have some suppose let us consider a small amount of lateral force generated due to some reason. After that, what we will find that if you imagine a, a ring over the periphery, then here might be the smallest uh, distance here may be the largest distance. So, in that case this path of different area or we say varying area over the periphery. In that case if we look into that in case of parallel duct if this duct is parallel then P 1 is P 2 is like that pressure variation will be like that. If it is a tapered duct then pressure variation will be like this and that definitely you can see that instead of parallel duct this will generate a force you say this is due to this nonlinearity. And other side if you look into other side then this is also um, some parabolic shape, but we can see that there is a difference, difference is due to that opening area. This means that due to this there will be definitely a lateral force in this directions. Okay. But if it is perfectly parallel due to this flow there will be no lateral force. This also not only for spool this is this happens any piston cylinder. When the spool or piston is moved, additional force is required to overcome internal friction force caused by the lateral push that is obvious. Now, how to compensate this? What we can do? We can provide a groove here. Now, providing this groove what happens? Let us see. Making a groove over the spool land the piston and piston the lateral push force can be reduced to some extent. How? If we now look into the pressure distribution due to this groove, this distribution will be something like this. Okay. Due to this what is happening, whatever the pressure here this is connected to other side. Say if there is no such groove, but keep in mind this. Uh, passage what we are looking into much much smaller than what we are looking into. This is real sense that will be capillary passage, because these are the sleeve and the spool they are very close fit and um, um, the difference in diameter may be only 20, 25 microns. Okay. However, if we make a groove like this, this groove is having a substantial depth may be 0.5 millimeter or something like that. This means that this path is directly connected. So, throughout this groove the pressure will be same and due to that this pressure curve will be like this. So, without groove this is the curve pressure distribution and with groove this is the pressure distribution curve. If we look into the other side of this uh, uh, spool, what is there? This side also um, difference in this pressure distributions. Now, here 
much uh, I mean larger difference as uh, this uh, deviation was more in that case a little less. But ultimately what is happening if we now estimate uh, at least at that portion the difference is force is very less that means totally the effect is that lateral force is reduced. So, this is the method of compensating the lateral force that is why you will if you will observe a spool you will find on the spool there are grooves. This providing such grooves has other problem or merits demerits are there say within this groove sometimes the dark particles are accumulated that um, gives a problems later. <coughs> the result resultant push force affecting the spool effect of compensatory pressure equalizing and centering groove etcetera are uh, these groups. These groups are called pressure equalizing group sometime that um, pressure compensation groove etcetera. Now, in spool valve design one widths of the porting lands must match with the corresponding port widths in the slips. Now, importantly say, say for example, it is a critical center valve in that case this width must be equal to width of this land. So, and critical center valve is preferred due to the quick response time over the null point. However, maintaining such dimension is always difficult because not only that, but also we have to maintain the distance between say for example, from this point on the sleeve from this point to this point what is the distance same distance may have to measure or the proportional distance has to be measured from one edge of the land the same similar edge in the other side. So, maintaining such uh, dimension is difficult however, we have to maintain that for better performance. Distances between lands must match with the corresponding dimensions between groove in the sleeve and finally, close tolerances must be held between the spool land diameter and corresponding sleeve bore diameter and on squareness in the land and the port groove edge. Now, this is another important factor is that this edges say from the movement point of view we may think of that we can provide a sample here, we can provide a sample here, but if we provide a sample there immediately for performance drastically falls. This is because drastically reduces, this is because of the reason that in that case at the time of opening this jet angle will be different and response will be much poorer than if we can maintain the sharp edge. Maintaining the sharp edge at the opening there will be the turbulent flow, but that turbulent flow is preferred from the response point of view. If uh, however, if these uh, edges are very sharp in that case there is a problem that due to this lateral force it may get struck there. So, to avoid that there is a small um, the breaking of such edge is done that means, you may find if, if it is measured a small um, uh, not chamfer you can say it's round up is done at these corners. Okay. However, it is better to keep these um, edges as sharp as possible. A tolerance of as you can see 0 0.0025 millimeter look at the tolerance this 0 0.25 millimeter is typical for a 
high performance servo valve. You see this to get this tolerance not only this dimension control, but also the surface finish is required. So, you can imagine how um, accurate machining is required. However, it may be plus minus not not 75 millimeter in general cases say a little lower performance low performance valve or maybe general purpose valve, but these are for uh, very accurate position control or, or velocity control. Valve coefficient such as flow gain and pressure sensitivity at null point depend on these tolerances. Now, choice of ways this is what is way say if I say that 4 by 3 DC valve that means 4 port 3 position or 3 way valve. So, that is called way now <coughs> no 3 uh, 4 ports 3 position that means 4 way 3 position valve first one is the number of port or way and second one is the position, but here the way means that port or on the how many uh, directions the flow occurs. So, how to select or uh, I would say that where it should be 4 way or 3 way or 2 way and that is an important factor we have to according to requirements we have to uh, make a choice of that. Now, general choice is 4 way valve because 4 way valve is in uh, it is easy to think of the system as well as maybe for from control law point of view. However, this with the number of ways the cost also increases. Now, in some specific applications three way valve is better. <coughs> One actuator line of course, with linear actuator only is one example of three way valve application less number of tolerance is required in such applications. Say with the linear actuator and with three way valve the system becomes uh, simple compact and relatively it is also controllable. So, where we are moving this actuator frequently in opposite directions then through a valve is a good choice. Another factor is the number of lands in the spool with respect to the number of ports that is ways in the sleeve and their locations. You see this I will show that 4 way may have 3 lands may have 4 lands or may have 2 lands also. So, it can be made like this, but they have own merits and demerits which I shall discuss. Now, various configurations as shown are possible. First, let us consider the two land four way spool valve. This is two land, but there are four way. What are the four way? If you see that this is the supply flow, you, let us consider this is a critical center or even if you overlap uh, valve, but still when it is in neutral positions, this it is totally closed, it cannot go in any directions this flow. So, that means flow is being bypassed through the relief valve may be. Now, if we move in this directions then oil will be supplied through this and this will go one end of, end of the actuator and the, from the other end this oil will return back to tank. If I move in the opposite directions it will be vice versa. Okay. So, this is one con configurations. Now, if we look into the other, this is three land four way spool valve. In that case, 
what is happening here the oil is directly coming to inside the valve inside this this pool stem and uh, it can move in either direction but if we consider this valve so this when we are moving in this directions the oil is going like this and the return oil is going back through this path okay and if I move in the opposite direction this will be opposite. So, now there is a question that why we should go for this we can make this is a very simple, but we will see that these two is having some differences also merits and demerits. However, the another valve is that the two and three way valve that is with the actuator, but uh, before that we will also see another valve that is if we say this is again four way, but we have four land. You can see apart from these two land there are another two land through which the oil is going back. Okay. So, starting from this one this is the two land this is three land this is four land, but all are four way. So, which one we should choose and why if we can do the same job with this valve why we should go for four land or three land. Okay. Each of such spool sleeve arrangements has merits and demerits over the other. Now, if we look into that such merits and demerits then First of all, if we consider two land valve that is two land four way, this is shorter in length, simpler in construction, statically unbalanced as in two written lines, resistances are not identical. For full port, the lands may log into the sleep groups. Say in this case say for critical center it might happen you can see that this simply can go inside say this is a full rectangular port. Okay. Now, this sleep height or with whatever we call it is exactly ideally is equal to the group width. So, in that case for full port simply this can go inside and also when it opens we ca can see this un unbalanced force. Now, remarks force in balance tend to open the valve further in this case. So, um, stability even at null point is difficult. Now, if I consider the other one that means, which is has having the three land moderate in length statically balanced this is statically balanced say if we look into this this will not try to move this or that way because this path is closed and these are widely used. Now, if I consider the other one that is the last one that is the four land and four way then operationally same as tool and valve with two additional end lands preventing leakage and providing better support. So, if I if we had to compare then we can compare this one with this in that case also this this is open directly flow is coming to the spool. So, this unbalance will be there, but as there is a land support there is no chance it will go into the groove and also there will be the um, leakage will be less in that case this directly this is open to the um, I mean outside and um, the leakage has to depend only on this seal in that case this path and then sealing. Okay. So, 
operationally this has these two are same, but this has much better performance. Whereas this is slightly different configurations. However, from close observations, it reveals that all such four-way valves shown in the illustrations are required same number of tolerances. That means tolerances means say this width, so maintaining such width and this length, here this length, here in relation to this length all has to relate with closed tolerances. So, that means if we think in terms of tolerances it will be same for both, but obviously this will be more expensive than this one. Now, next step is the choice of the type of valve center. That means, valve center means that is a closed center, open center or critical center. For linear flow gain with optimum or zero dead band, a critical center valve is the obvious choice. Open center valves are preferred for high temperature applications allowing flow at neutral zone. You see, um, if we prefer uh, that there is a high temperature and that temperature to be cooled, in that case it is better to keep this center open at null positions. But the problem is that for quick action that means, if we want we give a stroke the response will be delayed due to that hmm. and in many cases it is not tolerable, it is not acceptable. But high flow gain at null zone deteriorates the response at that zone which I have mentioned just now. The power loss at null due to the central flow is another disadvantage. The closed center valve has dead band, no flow gain at null resulting in loss of control loop at null. The valve area gradient is the principal parameter in the null flow gain, one of the major criteria in valve selection. Now, I have given some also on the practical data, the it is 6.5 10 to the power minus 6 meter cube per second that is uh, it is 6.5 cc and uh, 3.2 3.5 into 10 to the power minus 2 that is 35 uh, 3.5 liter perhaps per second flow gain per millimeter of stroke is usual range. This pool diameter is selected accordingly. Okay. Electrohydraulic servo valve have stroke ranging from 0 0.12 to 0 0.25 millimeter. Just imagine how small it is 0 0.25 millimeter, one fourth of a millimeter, it may be very large stroke to have 45 liter per minute to 200 liter per minute. You just imagine the orifice size, it even if rectangular port, see diameter may be 10 to 25 millimeter and with 0.25 such a small hole, but flow is 45 to 200 liter per minute. Higher stroke range from 2.5 millimeter to 4 millimeter for large flow range amounting 400 liter per minute to 1000 liter per minute approximately in 3 stage valve is found. That, that is 3 stage valve you see this pilot stage then one main stage that main stage is operating the another main stage you can see this is for very high flow. Okay. Usually the maximum valve stroke is kept below 5 percent of this pool diameter for full periphery rectangular port to satisfy the flow saturations and valve strength conditions. 
um, this we should say that flow saturations means that um, I, I would say uh, uh, that um, with the stroke the flow is increasing, but um, we have to consider that too much nonlinearity should not be there. So, from that point of view the flow saturations and also the valve strength is the um, I would call the how much is the strength is required to move this spool perhaps. Due to several reasons area gradient is given more attention than stroke length in valve design. Uh, now, area gradi gradient is the uh, what is called the pi d is called area gradient that is more important than the stroke length that means that decides what should be the diameter of this pool. <coughs> And uh, we have followed this uh, um, mainly I would say that hydraulic control system by merit that book we have followed as well from to know um, we have for better knowledge you can follow also uh, Martin and McLoy particularly the orifice sizes it is much, uh, discussed in detail. And also um, in general terms if you have more idea about the valves and uh, their applications etcetera, you can follow this Blackburn uh, report the book also. However, the mostly uh, I have consulted the merits book hydraulic control system. Thank you.